Hello everyone, this is a video for the October 26th release of uh, Gearotic. Um, there's been a couple of additions and bug fixes. If you're looking for a bug fix and we've discussed it on the forum, uh, and I've told you it's coming, then it is, your fix is in this version. So here I have a gear on the screen, and I'm going to send it to the 3D Workbench so that we can see what the first change is. That's the button down here for 3D Workbench. Um, here on the bench, the only thing that's changed up here is a new tab called Tab Height. Uh, in, in the past, the height of any tabs that you created uh, would be equal to the final pass. Now you can set them independently to be whatever tab height you wish. That's about the only real change other than bug fixes within Gurotic itself at the moment. But under the Tools menu in the Vector Wizards, which is actually a part of Augie, uh, a lot of changes have occurred. Uh, so we need to talk about the things that have been added and uh, how things generally work in it. So first off, we have under the File menu, uh, New Project, which will clear your project and take you to a new start. Your screen will be empty, your tree will be emptied as well. And we have a save and load project, so you no longer have to throw away work that you've done. Uh, if you pause in the middle and so on, you can save the project and bring it back later. This also partially solves the issue of not knowing how to recreate a flourish that you've made, because this way you can actually save the screen that created the flourish, and uh, all you need to remember is the numbers that you used, uh, which I will eventually put into a table for you. Okay, next you'll notice that where we used to have uh, export DXF, we now have export vectors. And under export vectors, you can now select uh, two additional types. Uh, in, as an addition to DXF, there is EPS and SVG types. Uh, these are experimental outputs. I don't know how useful they are. We'll talk about that more as people start to use them. That's about all that's on the menu screen that you need to worry about. Next, you'll notice down here on the screen we have a new entry for three-point arc so that you can create an arc on the screen. Now, in addition to that, a relevance database has been added to the uh, drawing program. So, if, for example, we had an arc on the screen, when you hover over an endpoint of something, you will see uh, the cursor change to a cross. This means it's a snapping point. So, we could draw a line snapping to that point and end up on the other end of an already present object. Now if we end that line by clicking on the same point, this entire object should chain together if I optimize it. And up here if I press optimize, uh, suddenly the chain is one chain. This could be important in the future as the program is going to deal pretty heavily with chain objects uh, and we'll discuss that more when we get there. Now people have asked me about trimming things like a flourish. So let's take a look at the new trimming tool as well. Uh, down here it looks like a pair of scissors uh, is a stomping tool and there's a couple of up down arrows beside it and so on. Um, this puts you into a special trimming mode. If I press it, it'll give me a warning on the screen saying select only one chain. I haven't selected a chain so it won't allow me to go into the stomping mode. If I click on a chain to select it and then hit stomp, I'll come up with a shape. Now that shape is a cursor. It's not actually part of the drawing or anything else. If I zoom in and out the drawing, the shape stays the same size. And this cursor is meant to operate like a French curve. Uh, it's meant to smooth out, trim, and do several jobs. When it's active on the screen, a left-hand click will uh, unionize the two objects. So it'll add to that drawing anytime I click the uh, left-hand mouse button. If I click the right-hand mouse button, I will subtract from the object, so I can trim an object by uh, using the right-hand button. So between the two of them, you can begin to build objects out. Now, if at some point uh, you clip an object and you orphan a chain, you can see a chain just appeared here, which is uh, not selected, uh, that becomes a chain in your drawing. You can't stomp on it to change it because it's not a selected chain and you can only stomp a single chain at, the, uh, at a time. Now obviously you wouldn't always want to sh stomp a chain with this particular shape. Uh, this shape can be handy. If you hold down the control key and move your mouse, the shape rotates. So you can rotate your stomp to any direction or orientation and then click to remove or add to a chain. Uh, again, you wouldn't always want that shape though, so if you roll your mouse wheel, you can change the shape to a new stomp and there are several included 
in here. Now, it could be that none of these shapes are ones that you would be comfortable editing your chains with. So you can also add to the stomps yourself. There's a file called french.dxf in the main folder uh, with which you can actually create your own stomps. But for the most part, there's usually a stomp here which will do close to what you want. Uh, the idea is to add more uh, types of French curves. It'll give a more pleasing curve uh, that you can clip in and out of objects. By zooming in and zooming out, it means that you can use effectively a stomp in very tight situations as well as in very uh, macro situations when you're zoomed out and looking at a very long curve. Uh, let's take a look at a flourish and how that works with trimming. I'll start by doing a file new project which clears us out. I'm going to hit flourish. It asks me to draw my flourishing layer. Uh, something I didn't mention in the last video on flourishes is if I uh, draw a bounding rectangle for a flourish, I don't have to stop there. I can actually put other objects inside the main generator and that tells it to stay away from those areas. So if you had a letter or a font in here uh, surrounding those things will tell it to ignore them. They don't have to be squares, they can actually be circles or you can even take lines and uh, draw shapes that you don't want to have filled. Um, it doesn't always follow your wish uh, but it tries its best. So let's try a flourish now. Uh, and let's try a complex one of maybe 12 and see what we get. And as you can see, the flourish that was generated is trying its best to ignore the areas that I have blocked out, telling it those are actually important background images that I have. Don't draw over them. Okay, I'm going to turn off the flourishing layer here so that all those guides disappear. And here we have our flourish. Now, people have asked me how to trim it. Again, that's with the stomping tool. So we'll go to our, we'll first select the vine and then we'll go to our stomp. And I'm going to hit my uh, control key and move up to my trimming tool. Now by zooming in on a, uh, on a group like this, if I right click, it will snip off that piece of the tree. And now the flourish has become more than one chain. And you'll notice if I try to edit that smaller uh, loop, it will not cut. But if I try to edit the larger loop, it will add into it or subtract from it depending on what I tell it to do. This is because it always picks the remaining largest area of chain to be the one which, which is still the subject of our trimming. It should have stayed red. That's a bug. I often discover bugs while I'm doing these videos. So that will be fixed on the next version as well. Uh, the remaining chain, the one that you're going to be able to clip, will stay selected, while the ones that you've orphaned will not. So here I've just clipped off that little bit of chain. Let me exit out of the stomping tool. And we can go and select that chain and move it away. We could also select this little piece that I made. and just simply delete it with the scissors. So now we have this little section of vine. I could take it over here for example and here you can see that I just simply laid it on top of that other vine and if I then select both chains and hit the addition button then when I add the chains together You can see we've joined into the chain seamlessly enough that it's hard to tell where we joined it in. Now I might mention that the next version is going to simply replace this chain, these two chains, with this one chain if you do such an operation. Originally I put it onto its own chain, up here it's called addition for example when I created this one, and I did that because we didn't have a redo and undo, uh, but we now do. Uh, so I will be changing the program on the next iteration so that when you do vector operations it simply replaces the one that you're working on rather than giving you another copy which is the uh, product that you've asked for. Now the last thing that uh, really has changed is we also have an offset uh, button so that you can select a chain. So here you can select the uh, distance of offset, how to select winding. This can be important um, in terms of how it pockets or how it offsets objects which are inside a chain when you've selected multiple chains. We'll talk about this more as we get into extrusion in the future. 
Um, here you can select whether you want corners, miters, or square ends on something that you're offsetting. You can offset an open chain as well, something like a line, or you can offset these closed chains. And uh, down here, you're telling it how to do an open vector. If you were to offset a line, for example, the ends of the line could be closed, but square or round. Um, so you might want to play with those a bit on offsetting various things to see the effects that you get. Um, offsets can take a little while. We have a progress bar now that shows you how long something is going to take. And now you can see the effect of the uh, offset that was done on this vine. Anyway, those are the changes so far. The program is uh, being steered in a direction so that I can do uh, kinetic visualizations and kinetic simulations of things like veins for tickers. But I need to get a few more drawing tools down pat before I do so. Uh, so you can expect this portion of the program to change fairly frequently. Um, and I wouldn't expect the exact usage to stay as you've seen in this video. Um, I just wanted to do this video to point out to people that are using it how the uh, tools work and how Stomp and so on works. Uh, you also have uh, Control Z for undo, uh, where you can take the program backwards and you can go several levels. You can also go Shift Control Z to bring things back if you have undone them. Um, once I add a few more tools and get it to the point that we can draw veins and so on, uh, then we'll begin to disc discuss how the kinetic simulations are going to work. Alright, thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, the vector processor.